All right, everybody, welcome back to the TV program. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, I'm going to be reviewing... Arthur C. Clarke's 2010 Odyssey 2. This is the sequel to... 2001 A Space Odyssey. Now, I reviewed this book earlier on the channel about a year ago, so if you want to watch this review, before you watch this review, before you watch this review, just type in my last name, Durfee, the title of the book, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and the review will magically appear upon your TV screen. So, we've got that. That's book number one. Book number two is the one I'm reviewing now. Then we've also got book number three, 2061, Odyssey 3. And we've got uh, 3001, Od the final Odyssey. So we will uh, read and review all of those books uh, before, you know, 3001. I mean, I mean, maybe I will live to see 2061. Which brings us to one of our first points. But before we get to that, the cover... The cover art on this is seriously gorgeous. This is another Michael Whalen painting. You know I love graphic design and cover illustrations. We always, we always talk about that with every book we review. And this book that Del Rey put out is just gorgeously put together with this um, Michael Whalen cover art. I love, love, love it. Um, 1982 is when this was written. Um, 2001 A Space Odyssey was written in the 1960s, so he took a little while to do the sequel, like, you know, about 20 years, maybe. Um, 1982, but he's writing about the year 2010. Well, 2010 seems like ancient history to us now. I mean, I'm doing this review in September of 2022, so we're 12 years past 2010. It's interesting to see what science fiction writers thought the future would be like. And in a lot of cases, they're correct. Most cases, they were way off. They weren't even close. But anyway, that's where we stand. We're reading a book about 2010. Now, in 1982, people probably thought, oh my God, 2010. That's never, that's forever away. That's forever away. It's never going to happen. We don't have to worry. I mean, the world will probably, nuclear holocaust will have wiped us out. I mean, we were scared of the Russians blowing us up in 1982. I was as a little kid. The fear of the Russians was the main anxiety I had. But we made it, and we made it past it. Probably just squeaked by, but we made it. Anyway, so what's this book about? The questions that were left in 2001 A Space Odyssey. What were some of the questions left in 2001? A little spoilery for 2001 if you haven't read it or seen the movie. But some of the questions are who and what um, transformed our main character Dave Bowman into um, the Star Child? Um, and why and what would become of the Star Child? Um, an un unanswered question from this book. Um, what alien purpose lay behind the monoliths on both Earth and the Moon. Uh, remember, monoliths played a big role in this first book. And s strange monoliths are sprouting up on Earth all the time. I don't know if you remember a few years ago, the one in the Utah desert that just magically appeared and then magically disappeared. Mysteries. Actually, we kind of know what happened to that. Anyway, another one of the question: what drove the computer HAL to kill the crew of the ship Discovery and what happened to the ship? So these are the questions left by book number one. What happens? Well, we get some of the answers in this book because uh, it's now 2010 and there's a space race between the Russians, of course, and the Americans to find the lost ship discovery somewhere out in the solar system. And then we get a detailed and exciting and scientific journey and adventure through our own solar system, and I don't want to spoil too much about what's going on, but you learn so much with Arthur C. Clarke, you just learn so much about the solar system, 
the way it works, the orbits of things, um, a lot about Jupiter and its moons. Uh, and then we've got our adventurers that go on the adventure to find this spaceship and we get their character arcs and their character sketches and their character stories. And I will just let you read through that and discover it for your own because it's just cool. And, um, and they're new characters. They aren't the same. I mean, and, um, I don't know why, because this is comment. Next comment is probably way off and everybody's going to disagree with it, but I don't know why, but I, the whole time I was reading this, I was kind of thinking of that movie interstellar. Um, the Christopher Nolan movie with Matthew McConaughey and Jessica Chastain, the Interstellar, and how they, uh, just the space travel and things and how things were set up for all that. And uh, for some reason, I was reading this, I just had images from that movie kind of going through my head a little bit. And maybe if the rest of you can make that connection too, I don't know. Let me know if I'm like out in the night or out, you know, or if I'm just fucking nuts to think that there's a correlation between the two, but I did kind of think that. Anyway, I absolutely love this novel just as much as I like this one. I like reading once in a while, not always. I like reading just, I don't know whether you call it high science fiction or just like technical science fiction or just science fiction that is not really about character or plot, but just about grand ideas about our stars that are out there and the universe and the galaxies and even the solar system, just books that talk about the scientific method, how things might be, um, how things can be, how we can do things, how we can create ships that would go that way, uh, what the science is behind it and what we might find when we're out there and what computers and artificial intelligence mean in conjunction with all of that. And we'll, the AI kill us all in the end. Like, you know, the computer HAL was not a good computer. It was a bad computer. And we've all experienced bad computers. I think we've all been there when the computer's not doing what we're telling wanted to do and we just want to take and throw it across a room. I've been there. I've been there. Anyway, I give 2010 Odyssey 2 a 9.5 out of 10. It's just well written. Um, it engages the mind, makes you think about things grander and bigger than our earth and our solar system and what might be out there. And uh, so yeah, just really good. 